Uh, welcome to our distinguished lecture series. Uh, I know that you have another engagement. Uh, uh, is there a, a meeting? What time is it? The next one? Uh, I would like to be done by three o'clock. If we can be finished by three o'clock, that would be wonderful. All right, then we should start right away. Uh, are we ready? Ritika ji, sab log hai? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are ready. We may please start. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Then in that case, yes, yes. I think I think we should start. Uh, so, Dr. Ram Bhargav ji and friends, uh, I'm delighted to welcome all of you in today's distinguished lecture, which will be delivered by the DG of the ICMR, uh, Professor Balram Bhargav ji, who, as you also know, is the Secretary, Department of Research. Uh, Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. He's a very, very distinguished scientist and a cardiologist of international rep. I'd like to introduce as we normally do, but because time is so limited, I would like to invite him right away. The only thing I want to say is that, as we all know, ICMR is at the forefront of our fight against COVID. They have collaborated with Bharat Biotech to produce our first indigenous vaccine, co-vaccine, of which I myself am a recipient. I must say, I got it at all uh, on the seventh of uh, of this month, and uh, so far, as you know, I've hardly had uh, any reaction of any sort. So I'm a very proud recipient of this uh, vaccine. And I also want to say by just one more word of introduction that uh, we started this series incidentally about one year ago when uh, lockdown was imposed uh, to prevent the spread of, uh, of COVID-19. And our last uh, live event was on 13th of March 2020, which was a roundtable on Indology. And after that, uh, we started this online series. And I'm happy to say that uh, you know, we have now been able to actually conceive of a world beyond COVID because, uh, you know, we are almost moving there. The caseload is increasing, as we've all heard, but still uh, we will hear uh, from Professor Bhargav, you know, uh, what, what India is doing. I believe India is one of the vaccine leaders of the world. We want to be the pharmacy of the world. And uh, by a strange... Uh, should I say, just a fate, uh, if you may remember, YK2 ka ek uh, uh, bahut bada threat tha 2000 mein. To uski wajah se humare jo um, uh, software engineers the, programmers the, unko ek bahut bada protsahan mila dunia bhar mein. Unho ne apna uh, kar dikhaya tha. Unke log so ke uh, Y2K mein sa chonge yoga hoga. Or usi tarah kisi ajeeb uh, ye kisam ka pharmacy of the world quad ki meeting hui thi unki statement aayi thi ek do din pehle and uh, i think we are uh, really emerging because covid and other such uh, diseases unexpected as they are may be with us for a while cmr with more than 20 laboratories and institutions under its charge and has a very distinguished pedigree. You know, if you read about the history of uh, ICMR, it goes way back to colonial times. You see, uh, uh, in 1911, if I'm not mistaken, IRFA, Indian Research Fund Association, was established by Sir Hartcourt Butler. So this distinguished legacy uh, is being carried forward today by ICMR, headed by Dr. Bharga, who is also an innovator, an inventor, a leader in public health in India. Because like Gandhiji, Dr. Bharga believes that prophylaxis is better than cure, cure. Because such a large country, 1.3 billion, to make healthcare available to everyone, usse achha, prevent people from falling sick. I think this is much better. Sir, I turn it over to you. I'm deeply grateful to you personally for joining us today. Thank you, sir. All yours. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, uh, 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 Professor Paranjpe. 
uh, you have very aptly described the situation that India is at in the at the moment in terms of the the pandemic. We are not only the pharmacy of the world uh, because we supply more than sixty percent of the generics to many developed countries, but we are actually a vaccine superpower to be added to that because we are supplying up till now sixty percent of the vaccines to the lower middle income countries which were being used in the past. And uh, that has uh, helped us uh, 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 in, uh, in a public-private partnership that we were able to create with the Bharat Biotech and able to deliver an absolutely 100% homegrown, homebred uh, vaccine, uh, which is, uh, I, I am writing down my memories on that and I think should be ready in a, 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 a another three or four weeks, which is uh, India Goes Viral. That is the, the name of the book, India Goes Viral. So, so we are going to talk about that. And, and uh, but before that, I think uh, uh, before the vaccine part, I will talk about what uh, role was played by ICMR, and and uh, that is most important because uh, uh, if you remember, the first case was were two medical students who traveled from uh, Wuhan, and then they from Wuhan they went to Hong Kong, and from Hong Kong they came to Calcutta. From Calcutta, they went to Bangalore, and from Bangalore, they went to Cochin, and, and that is where we were able to, then they, they, that was around 26th of January, 27th of January last year, and 30th of January last year, we confirmed that they were, um, they were um, COVID positive. And at that point in time, there was a huge, uh, initially there was ignorance, then uh, there was a, a sense of fear, and uh, followed by a fear of stigma, followed by a fear of, uh, uh, a state of, uh, you know, that uh, a lockdown followed by uh, some amount of success stories within the country. And then we were uh, able to control it. Uh, we had the peak in, uh, as we speak, in September. Uh, and then gradually the cases went down. And um, a lot of countries had predicted that India would be a disaster. India would be all kinds of problems. Uh, but fortunately, uh, uh, whether it be healthcare workers, whether it be the healthcare of our government, I think uh, it was a more a coordinated approach by the government of India. And, and, and I will talk a little bit about that, how they did it. Uh, it was a, 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 a whole of government approach, as I would say. And, and, and because of that, they were able to uh, deliver uh, as we speak. So I will uh, put in some slides and I will share some slides and then I will start on. So. We put it on full screen. Yeah. Okay. Can you all see the slides? Okay. Okay. So this is our fight against COVID-19, and uh, uh, and if we look at why do we have this pandemic this year, and why are we witnessing more and more viral infections in this millennium? Uh, maybe SARS, MERS, Ebola, yellow fever, Zika, Nipah. And, and I think the reasons are very simple. What has happened is that the man is trying to acquire the forest. Man is trying to occupy the forest. Man is cutting down trees. And there is a change in environment. There is change in ecology. There is so much of urbanization with extreme connectivity. There is so much of travel happening that uh, that uh, spread will automatically happen. And, and, and that is where we are, we are responsible for global warming. We are responsible for change in environment. We are responsible for change in our ecology. We have not respected our, our biodiversity, not as a nation, but as a world. Uh, and, and we have neglected public health as, as a subject in the country and, and inadequate spending on healthcare has happened. Uh, um, here, I would like to just put the things in perspective that uh, the healthcare spending in India has been less than 1% of the GDP. And the healthcare spending in countries uh, 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 with a developed health system, for example, the United States is 19%, and 19% of a $19 trillion economy, which means that it is greater than the economy of, the, of, of India, which has been spent on healthcare in the United States. Having said that, United States healthcare is is not one that we should emulate because it has its 
huge big problems. Research is excellent. I would I would follow with their research. But healthcare, the socialist healthcare system, which was envisaged uh, at the time of independence, that we'd have a pyramidal structure with primary health centers, with secondary health centers, and the tertiary care with the uh, with the uh, uh, self dependence on postgraduate education uh, that was working well till uh, the early 90s and we were looking at the the more uh, united kingdom or the commonwealth healthcare system where it was a socialist sort of a system and that worked very well for the country and has worked very well for the united kingdom for the last 70 years now it was the second world war which had about 3 million people die and at, after the Second World War, the United Kingdom set up their national health system at the cost of $80 billion, uh, if I'm correct. And, and similarly, the United States set up the National Institutes of Health and also the Veterans Administration hospitals at a cost of $52 uh, billion and $40 billion, uh, which, is uh, which is a huge amount of money. And that is why, so they invested a lot in research. UK invested a lot in uh, promoting uh, basic socialistic healthcare system and they continue to spend about eight seven or eight or nine percent of their gdp on healthcare and that has worked well so indian healthcare spending will have to increase find somewhere a middle path uh, not at one percent but uh, not at 20 percent or 19 percent but somewhere between seven eight or whatever but uh, it is going to be increased to 2.5 percent and the government has clearly given that and this time the health budget has also been very, very reassuring in terms of uh, 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 a sudden increase by 137% with the increase in health research budget, as well as combining it as a mother and child care, water, sanitation, and health care. So preventive, promotive, and and uh, and, and uh, so that is uh, the, the good thing that has happened, and that is 220,000 crores, which is about more than 70,000 crores, which is just health care uh, spending. So that is, that makes it more than 200% or 300% more uh, as we speak. So, so, so that is very good that has happened. Uh, it has, but for India, as uh, you mentioned about Y2K, it has also emerged as an opportunity and, and uh, how this opportunity has been uh, captured or as we say, carpe diem in, in Latin, carpe diem, you know, how India has seized the opportunity. And, and that is where uh, India's largest democracy with respect to people's voices, to recalibrate its intervention measure, serious from the beginning. India was serious from the beginning. It was a whole of government approach, calibrated approach, proactive, preemptive, and a graded response. We, our testing was scaled up gradually, depending on what was available. Our, our, our uh, hospital facilities were scaled up as the pandemic grew. It was science driven with best practices and evidence base. And more importantly, we had a we have a very strong leadership with excellent communication, and he managed to keep all the states together, communicating with all the states every two weeks, all chief ministers, all chief secretaries of states, uh, every two weeks, right from um, uh, February, March of last year. So that, that was what united India and kept together. And even the opposition states, all of them were just listening to him and following uh, blindly in terms of what uh, and he was listening to the scientists scientists in terms of what is the right thing to do for the country what can we learn from the international experience and here another thing was uh, that our pandemic was about 3 or 4 months later than the european and the american pandemic so we could take some learnings from their pandemic and and and, and utilize those uh, learnings so we were in a room but with the door shut in a lockdown but our windows were open so we were letting the knowledge come in. The knowledge was coming in, but we were we were disseminating it uh, within ourselves, crystallizing it, and giving the right uh, right advice to the to the government as a, as a scientific community at large and the healthcare community. We followed the five T uh, strategy, which is test, track, trace, treat, and technology. And we also resisted the concept of herd immunity, which many countries embraced that herd immunity will occur. And, and, and if you know the concept of herd immunity, that, that uh, the seroprevalence goes up and, and then uh, you are not able to transmit the virus. But we found that uh, countries like United Kingdom initially, Sweden, many parts of USA 
resorted to herd immunity and did not uh, use the COVID appropriate behavior of the use of masks. And, and, and here I have a hypothesis, and I think uh, because you are uh, people on advancements on science and, and you know, India ha is a young democracy. It is a, just a 70 year old democracy. So there is some amount of discipline still there in terms of following what the leadership is saying. However, in countries which are 300 years old democracy or 400 years old democracy, they just don't listen. They are ready to, and, and we are said to be argumentative Indian, yes. But at the same time, I think we still follow destiny. We follow some amount of discipline, which is which I think was very interesting to note during this pandemic. And I think uh, India should be um, lauded for that and, and, and every Indian citizen should be lauded for that. So um, in terms of the national testing network, we. We have now, we had one laboratory at that point in time, which was the National Institute of Virology, which was established again, a vision of the earlier director general and the earlier secretaries who set up that uh, who, uh, the National Institute of Virology maximum containment or the DSL4 laboratory in 2012, 2014, the 13, that was the first of its kind in Southeast Asia region. And the Wuhan lab was set up in 2017. And totally in the world, there are about 35 labs. And the first one in Southeast Asia one was the one at Pune. And, and, and that started testing in 2012. And, and before 2012, all the samples, blood samples of the virus infections was sent to CDC Atlanta for testing. And since then, we are not testing, uh, sending samples at all uh, to, uh, to any parts of the world. And, and 30th January, as I mentioned, we had the first uh, one lab, and then gradually we scaled up the labs to 151 in April. And then today we have 2,300 or 2,400 laboratories across the country, uh, which are testing for COVID-19. And this is the RT-PCR and the private sector has played an important role. The government has uh, played an important role in setting up these laboratories and, and, and they, this network has been created. Uh, and, and initially, uh, and, and then the number of tests, the first crore, uh, 10 crore of tests were done in 10 months, and the second 10 crore were done in three months. So we've already done about 24, 24 crore tests in the country uh, 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 today, and, and uh, they are uh, uh, more than, say, I would say 25%, uh, 20% uh, of the population uh, has been tested. In. So as I mentioned, the calibration of the testing strategy was uh, we, uh, the, the the, from the ICMR, we st set up a national task force, uh, which we informed the Supreme Court, and we had the health secretary as the co-chairperson and myself as the co-chairperson, and we requested Dr. Paul to be the chairperson, and that national task force had uh, other, other uh, committees. And we used to meet regularly to decide everything about testing, treatment, tracing, uh, and, and I'll come to that. So initially in February, we were just testing the travelers. And, and, and then in March, we started testing healthcare workers, the patients of uh, acute respiratory infection, and the contacts. In, then in April, we developed another test called the TrueNet, and I'll talk a little bit about TrueNet after this, which is a totally indigenous test, uh, which we were using for tuberculosis. We re, uh, recalibrated it and uh, repurposed it for testing for uh, COVID, and, and, uh, and we had experience of using it for NEPA, and, and then we did pool testing, and in May, June, June, we started antigen testing or the rapid antigen test. And India was the first country to start the rapid antigen test, which were WHO approved in September. And, and the TrueNet we started in April, and, and which is a molecular test, uh, which was started in other parts of the world in October. Uh, and in September, we were so self-sufficient that we had testing on demand because initially in February, March, the kits for testing were imported and it was a supplier's market uh, and 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 they uh, the, there were countries like China country, and many countries from Europe who were supplying those kits, and they said if you do not uh, pick it up in the next uh, three or four days, we will uh, we will give it to other another country. And 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 for that uh, uh, during the lockdown, we at ICMR we had created a headquarters in such a way that uh, everyone was working till about two a.m. at night. The National Institute of Virology was working till two a.m. at night with the experiments, which I will come to, and. Uh, we had a guest house where we had a captive uh, uh, scientists who were there, about 30, 40 of them, and they used to come to the headquarters. And it was a bubble that we had created at that time, and, and we were working uh, tirelessly, and unfortunately, we were able to, to, to deliver. So we, we upscaled the laboratories. 
Now, uh, laboratories were yes. set up in, in every district. Of the, that was the vision that in every district of the India, we should have uh, uh, RT-PCR laboratories. We created 14 mentor institutions, AIMS, PGI, uh, uh, then the, the Institute in Shillong. So, and, and we asked them to mentor their local medical colleges to set up the labs. So it was kind of a hub and scope sort of a system that we created. And we also were able to set up labs in uh, remote areas like Ladakh, Northeast, uh, Andaman Nicobars, and, and, uh, and, 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 and Lakshwiti. So in the first phase, we set up laboratories, the RT-PCR laboratories in the large cities and the urban areas. In the second phase, in the district level, we set up the TrueNAT and the CBNAT and the Abbott machines. And, and, and then in the phase three, we had the field level, which was in June, the antigen test or the rapid antigen test, uh, which we tested up. Now, the point of care molecular test, which I'm talking about TrueNAT, is a laboratory in a suitcase, which is uh, portable, battery operated. And this tests a small number of tests, but it can be done within an hour and it can be done without electricity and results are available in 45 minutes. And this was WHO approved. This was developed by an, a scientist from Indian Institute of Science and a company now based out of Goa. We have helped them right from the beginning. We did uh, the, uh, the true net testing for tuberculosis, got a WHO pre-qualification. We are also re repurposed it for NEPA testing, which was a very high mortality. And we utilized it for, in Bangladesh uh, for NEPA testing. And now this time, and we also used it for leptospirosis, first time in the world. And now recently we used it for COVID-19 testing in April 2020, and we had 2,530 true lab uh, machines because they were already part of the tuberculosis program. So we repurposed them for using it for uh, for COVID. And 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 in, in in Lancet there was an article where they developed a, 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 a test which is similar to our uh, true net called DNA Nudge. Uh, and they published about that in September, October, and they had some five labs or five machines of that at that point in time in the United Kingdom. And, and, and this was in October, and we had already started uh, with 2,500 tests uh, machines in, in April. So, and we, we wrote about it in the Lancet uh, about it, and they, they, they really praised it that as well. Then, 14 mentoring institutions and labs in remotest areas, 16 demos. And an and interesting part, I, I really want to. Uh, it's a nightmare going through it, but it was right up to 2 a.m. We had to get supplies to different uh, laboratories in the country. We had the Operation Lifeline run with the Indian Air Force and the, some private airlines and the India Post. And we were able to have a coordinating to, during the lockdown to send uh, samples to different parts of the country or for, uh, I mean, uh, uh, consumables for testing. We uh, immediately passed a Gazette notification uh, in June that uh, all medical colleges, whether it be government or private, have to have a viral te testing laboratory. Otherwise, they may, uh, uh, they, they, that would be the minimum, minimum standard for them to continue with their recognition. So it's a kind of a carrot and stick sort of an approach where we also requested them and they uh, really worked very hard. And we have 526 out of the 536 medical colleges immediately commissioned with state-of-the-art RT-PCR laboratories. And, and that happened very rapidly. Uh, and, and, and because of a coordinated effort of the basic infrastructure that was uh, there. We set up high throughput laboratories at uh, um, uh, Noida, Bhutaneshwar, Patna, Bombay, Chennai, Kolkata. And these were machines which were uh, uh, very short in supply. And we had three, five of them already for tuberculosis diagnosis. And then US was supplying them. And they had said that we have eight machines for Asia and you will get three and you will get. So it was a kind of a supplier's market. But, uh, but we were able to get some of them and, and set them all up in the country as also do. We set up the mobile testing laboratories where we put up PCR machines in the vans and uh, Spice Health helped us in that. And this was in when we had the third peak of in Delhi and in remote areas in Delhi, we were able to set these, these laboratories to do RT-PCR testing. Interesting story, in February of last year, we had, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, we had uh, this, um, outbreak in Iran, which was uh, immediately following the Chinese epidemic in Iran. And it started in Qum, which is the religious site, uh, wherein uh, a, a large number of Shia pilgrims from Kargil, more than 6,000, was stranded there. And, and then we had to, ICMR and IV, uh, National Institute of Virology, had to set up a RT-PCR laboratory, uh, which was flown, and some scientists were flown uh, 
We were worried about them getting ill. We didn't know about this disease. We were uh, not aware how severe it is, but six of our uh, technicians and scientists uh, went, uh, flew overnight to uh, Pune with the equipment and set up a lab. We tried to set it up in uh, uh, in Iran, in the healthcare facility there. They did not agree. They said our scientists, uh, our people have to be tested and all those issues. So we had to set it up in the Indian embassy in the basement. Uh, of the Indian Embassy, we collected 3,000 odd samples, and it was 15% positivity. And special flights were arranged to take those uh, people who were negative and positive separately uh, back to India, and they were kept in quarantine at several quarantine facilities in, in, in India, and 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 then taken back to their hometown. But the inventory demand forecasting, we again had 20 ICMR demos for inventory demand forecasting, a full electronic system for uh, stock out and uh, requirements. We had a data entry portal, which is the largest the single source of truth for the country in terms of the ICMR portal, having the guests or results of 23 crore uh, uh, people, much larger than the database that we are now creating for the people being vaccinated at this moment. So this was the testing, and this was responsible for testing as the disease trends, policy making, resource planning, and clinical decision making. We had to keep, we had to have uh, the procurement processes again, uh, again by the government rules and the tendering process. Uh, but fortunately, the government is swung into action in February. The Prime Minister's office set up uh, 10 empowered groups. And these empowered groups, there was one on testing, there was one on oxygen, there was one on oxygen hospitals, there was one on uh, you know, uh, empowered groups, and they would meet regularly and, and advise accordingly, and, and several uh, things were, were very fast-tracked. One on, on, on textiles, PPE manufacturing, uh, mask manufacturing, um, the manufacturing of uh, reagents. We we developed a first indigenous human ELISA kit for testing uh, of the of uh, COVID-19. And and over the a few uh, months, we were able to test uh, the startups developed uh, set up viral transport medium RNA extraction kits and the rapid antibody kits. Uh, and 1184 diagnostic commodities uh, were evaluated. 419 were indigenous. And, and because of that, uh, uh, they were tested at various, the quality control of various laboratories were monitored uh, for RT-PCR as well as rapid antigen tests by different of our 27 of our ICMR institutes and other science agencies also pitched in uh, to help out, help out with us. Uh, the procurement was decentralized. We put them all up on, on the government e-market. And in August, we asked the states to start procuring rather than the central procurement for all this. Uh, and, and once we were able to develop our own indigenous kits, the international kits also reduced their price tremendously. And if you look at the cost was 1,208 plus 300, 36 plus 180, about 1,800 rupees from March to May 2020. And after July uh, 2020, uh, it, the cost has come down to total of 135 rupees as compared to 1,727 rupees in March uh, for testing in the RT-PCR, which is the gold standard for testing. Now we are exporting these goods and 1,048 lakhs of viral transport medium, 949 lakh RNA extraction kits and 494 RTPC kits have been exported to different parts of the world. Now, and, and we were the fifth country to isolate the virus uh, on the 9th of March. And uh, this uh, virus was uh, uh, helped us and develop the ELISA test and also the monoclonal and the laboratory assays and antiviral screening. And we also isolated the variant strain, uh, first report of the UK variant and the Brazil and the South African variant and tested our vaccine against that. Uh, now uh, the, we did the three national uh, zero surveys, the first and the second and the third, which uh, showed that it was 0.7%, then 7.1% and 21%. Now here is an interesting story. The first zero survey was done in April and May and all our ICMR scientists uh, uh, from different institutes were plugged in and they went into the communities in 21 states and collected blood samples of 24,000 adults and, and with the wearing uh, personal protective equipment and going to uh, the, uh, the districts uh, and also to uh, various villages to collect these samples and these that's all been uh, now published in our, our various journals. A sewage surveillance was done in Bombay and we standardized the procedure for uh, testing uh, uh, virus in the sewage samples. Uh, we had experience from polio, and we leveraged that sound, and we have now 20 sites to make that. 
In terms of clinical trials, we participated in the WHO trials and contributed to more than 10% of the patients for this study. We did the largest trial on plasma therapy in the world, and this was done in the lockdown. And here I want to uh, uh, tell a little story because this is uh, when the democratization of research was uh, happened. Because earlier research was happening in the, in the big institutes of the country, uh, whether it be All India Institutes or PGI Chandigarh, and, and the rest of the medical colleges were not really plugged into major research. So we, with the use of a virtual medium, we connected with about 40 medical colleges and requested them, gave them the protocol, handheld them, and they did the largest, they did uh, the plasma therapy trial in 454 patients, which is the largest trial ever in the world. And this was published in the British Medical Journal. And there were two editorials on this, which they really praised it, how we clearly demonstrated that plasma therapy does not work in moderate to severe disease and, 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 and led to rest the, the hypothesis and black marketing of plasma that was happening in many parts of the world. We uh, continued to publish scientifically, and we have already published uh, three volumes of India and uh, Indian Journal of Medical Research. And this journal has uh, been in existence uh, since the last uh, 100 years, 110 years actually. Uh, and and uh, this has been publishing regularly, and we have published four supplements on, on COVID. In terms of vaccine development with uh, uh, Professor Paranj, we talked about, we had a partnership with Bharat Biotech. We did help uh, Zydus Candela. We helped Serum Institute. We did provided the virus strain to uh, Bharat Biotech. We characterized their virus strain. We did technical and lab support for phase one, phase two. Now, one, we conducted the preclinical studies in hamsters and monkeys. I will talk a little bit about that later on. We did the phase two and three trials for AstraZeneca and COVAC and, and also for uh, Cadilla, we did the preclinical studies on, on, on monkeys. In, uh, now, in terms of the co-vaccin, we had uh, excellent uh, scientific publications uh, in iScience, which is a very high impact journal uh, of the cell on mouse, rabbits, and rats, and monkeys was published in Nature Communications. Now, this monkey studies were done during the lockdown. We had to do it in the maximum containment facility at uh, Pune. We had to they were, we had to capture monkeys. We had to get the permissions. We, the monkeys had all disappeared from the uh, during the lockdown from the cities and had gone into the jungles. So we had to, with the forest department and ICMR team, went to capture the monkeys. We got those monkeys. We got them to the laboratory at uh, Pune. They had uh, tested their health because they were not uh, red monkeys. They were wild monkeys. So we tested them for tuberculosis for. Uh, other viral diseases, we tested their all their blood tests, we got their x-rays done, we had to procure x-ray machines for that place, and then we um, had to give uh, give them the vaccine. So we gave them the two doses of the vaccine, and after two doses of the vaccine, we gave them the virus challenge, and the virus had to be given inside the lungs by bronchoscopy. So we had uh, to fl fly people from, uh, from our ICMR headquarters who were pulmonologists, they went to that place and the city center in Pune, uh, the army city center was also roped in and they helped us to do the bronchoscopy of the monkeys to give the virus inside the inside the lungs uh, to, the, to the monkeys. And every day the monkeys were again anesthetized and their samples of bronchoalveolar lavage were collected every day for, for testing how much the virus was growing there or not growing. And then the monkeys were sacrificed. Similar study was done on hamsters, and then we did the phase one trial, which was published in Lancet, the phase two trial, which has been published in the Lancet, and the phase three trial, which has clearly shown 81% uh, uh, efficacy of this. Uh, uh, we also published a comparative uh, efficacy on the monkeys of the top six vaccine candidates in the world, and, and we demonstrated that this is in the top six candidates in the world. Uh, we also had a genomic consortium, which was created uh, of 10 institutes, and you know we we realized uh, that uh, getting out of your silos, working with your colleagues within your department, within your institute, within within with different institutes, with different scientific organizations, India had a huge strength, and we we leveraged that strength and were able to uh, uh, do a lot of lot of things. We tested the UK virus, and which emerged in September, and were able to demonstrate. That uh, we were able to culture it within seven days, and then tested our vaccine, which was given to the people in uh, and uh, in, in July August in the phase one. We took out their serum, 
and, and tested it against this vaccine in the laboratory and demonstrated that this is working against them. This was against the UK virus strain and, and also the South African strain and also the Brazilian variant. We were able to clearly demonstrate that these vaccine is working. We developed biorepositories for sample collection again in different institutions and established a network of biorepositories. And we had, as I mentioned, the National Task Force, which was responsible for advising us on calibration of testing, uh, providing oversight on ongoing research on discharge policy, on required clinical trials, clinical management protocols, newer and repurposed uh, treatment options. And, and, and that, that committee used to meet regularly. And, and uh, we were able to uh, uh, do uh, the testing, scale up the testing, test the vaccine, scale up the vaccine, and now the vaccine in the country uh, in the phase two and the phase three will be starting. And, and gradually we are from healthcare workers, frontline workers, 45 years and above with the comorbidities and above 60. And gradually we will lower this age, uh, 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 depending again, calibrated strategy on, on how much is our ability to vaccinate and how much vaccine we have. And, and then again, calibrating it to be, uh, give it to our, uh, to, uh, to break the virus uh, transmission. It has been a huge, huge uh, journey, which is uh, which has been a learning experience that if we get out of our silos. If we work together uh, as Indians, we can deliver tremendously, not only for India, but for the world. And, and, uh, and, um, and, and hopefully this will be an example uh, and has been an example for the government to increase uh, spending on healthcare. And also we have to preserve our ecology, our di biodiversity, and also not prevent other such infections to happen by by uh, not pre and prevent the bats and other animals not from migrating from their own habitat uh, to come to uh, where people are living and, and spread these kind of infections and and mutations so i will stop here and uh, thank you so much for your uh, attention because uh, attention uh, uh, is the rarest and the purest form of uh, generosity that uh, that uh, that you can uh, that anyone can give Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for that. Uh, should I say extremely rapid? Uh, I, I think journey uh, through uh, all your splendid achievements in this time of crisis. I realize time is limited, but maybe we can have a couple of questions. And uh, here I, I would like to just, just just say one point. The story that I have told is for testing and for vaccine. We have a similar story for personal protective equipment. We have a similar story for masks uh, from textile, Ministry of Textile. We have a similar story for oxygen and oxygen generation plants being set up at medical colleges. Uh, if, if you were to, uh, none of the hospitals in Delhi before the pandemic were generating their oxygen. It was all commercial oxygen that was coming. So now many medical colleges are getting uh, oxygen generation plants so that they can generate oxygen on their own. Uh, so all these things, uh, I think it was a a, a huge opportunity for India to ramp up its uh, uh, health system. And I think uh, both public and private have uh, worked very well. And from the government's perspective, uh, all the ministries have really worked in together, uh, breaking all boundaries and working together. I think I would really congratulate the government to really take it forward, not just ICMR. I think but there was similar stories everywhere. I mean, indeed, if you just in hospital, hospital and, and look at what the healthcare workers were doing, how they were handling people uh, and how the patients were going through without relatives there. It was, I mean, it was a, a, a horrible experience for everyone, but everyone learned and everyone contributed. Uh, we did lose uh, a, a few healthcare workers in this uh, fight, uh, but uh, fortunately compared to many parts of the world, we have been lucky uh, or, uh, or, uh, or we were preemptive or whatever the reason is, I think, uh, or more disciplined, or whatever. It, it's it's uh, it, we can conjecture a lot of things, uh, but uh, but I think uh, uh, God has been kind to us. Uh, indeed, indeed, as you pointed out, uh, there was an unprecedented coordination between the different government agencies and departments, and visionary leadership made all the difference. I just saw a tweet by uh, Dr. Harsh Vardhanji, where he says that we have. Uh, vaccinated over 32 million people and i i believe a, a day or two ago we hit a record of 1 million vaccinations for that day so this is indeed uh, you know quite uh, stupendous 
and as you said uh, uh, you know in a time of crisis we have shown that if we work together uh, with a common cause which is bigger than any individual or department or institution we can do wonders so we have a few minutes left and we can uh, if you if you permit take a few questions in fact Absolutely. i had a longer yeah i had a longer introduction i wanted to mention your various achievements padma shri the fellowships the uh, you know the Stan, uh, the stanford uh, fellowship you started and your innovations for heart and chest and all but we'll come to that some other day you know i will start with a, with my first question which is that i remember that when the Bio, uh, bharat biotech vaccine was uh, uh, notified for emergency use there was a lot of criticism that the uh, and clinical trials so uh, how would you respond to that uh, criticism yeah i think that's a very important question and i think uh, all that has all now been laid to rest uh, because truth finds its uh, its way we have um, um, the what was done was uh, the traditional classical mindset was that you have to do a phase 1 then the phase 2 then the phase 3 and then wait for results and then typically it takes 8 to 10 years for a vaccine to develop but fortunately our drug controller had a, a new set of clinical trial rules which were in 2019 and and this was before the pre covid and those clinical trial rules were gazette notified at that point in time they served us tremendously and again uh, the as the indian government has been innovative at every level and repurposing things the drug controller was also innovative in terms of giving the permissions on the basis of those new clinical trial rules which said that on the basis of phase 2 results we can give in an emergency or in a pandemic we can give approvals so that uh, was was the reason uh, how we managed it quite well exactly but uh, you know the practice i still remember so called eminent virologists in india i i remember gagandeep kang and such people you know they were lambasting the government and even icmr so is there is there some communication gap you think or uh, is there anything that we could do better to get our point of view across because lay people are not aware of all the you know technicalities and uh, i still remember reading an article where they said oh this is borrowed data 27000 people were tested abroad and none were tested in india there were only animal trials etc so yeah i think you're right i think we were not uh, uh, although we did have our tuesday briefings with the press we were communicating with uh, with uh, them uh, regularly uh, but uh, probably we did not articulate it that well uh, one point the second point in terms of uh, during the lockdown um there was some um, uh, it was basically icmr which was open at that point in time so many of these other agencies and other organizations and other uh, people who were probably not part of the national i mean you can't please everyone so so there were some people who had uh, uh, resentment about it which is which is fine and i think that is that is how our democracy is vibrant and and, and it continues to be and it should be so so i i think that to also kept us on our toes all the time that is probably probably the best thing that it can happen in fact uh, one of the questions uh, from our fellow professor hitendra patel is is related he says there's so much confusion around the uh, key health issues because our uh, you know public health uh, infrastructure and policy and communication is not up to the marks so is it possible he asks to create a group of volunteers people who are educated uh, especially in the sciences and the biomedical sciences who can uh, uh, be, be an intermediary between uh, an apex body like uh, uh, you know icmr and the common public because uh, you know by the time things filter into newspapers and so forth there can be chinese whispers you know many a, many a thing is uh, twisted and distorted rob robert is a brown dog robert is is a dog kind of thing that which is you know they, they keep on twisting it exactly. yeah okay no, no that is a very valid point and i i would i would be delighted to take a uh, 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 coordinate and co collaborate uh, with uh, uh, your institution because uh, your institution is uniquely placed and and uh, tremendous um, um, 
and you can get the right people, uh, the, the intellectuals of the country, to be an interface between ICMR or, or the Ministry of Health and, and the public. And I think uh, we can do that very fast, and I think we will, we will do it very fast. I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. That's a great suggestion. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. One more question has come uh, regarding. I had a question. Uh, uh, Professor Raju, I'll just come to you. I just want to clear one or two questions which have come already, and I'll just come to you. Give me a moment, yeah. Professor yeah. Raju. Just a moment, please. So, one question has come about, uh, you know, how the vaccine got invented, and what was the exact role of ICMR. Uh, the question is that uh, you supplied the samples, serum samples from the Institute of Virology. But who did the actual research? Who was at the cutting edge of the research in in yeah. in inventing yeah. the the Indian vaccine? Yeah, so there are lots yeah. of steps in inventing a vaccine. The first is the, the finding the virus. Uh, so we had collected it uh, from the two patients, who first patients who came from uh, Wuhan and the fourteen Italian tourists. So we got their samples. Uh, we isolated the virus, which is uh, on uh, on virus cell lines, which is uh, monkey kidney cells, uh, standard uh, procedure. But uh, for it to be growing, uh, was we were lucky to grow it by uh, the 9th of March. And then we gave the virus to Bharat Biotech, who have the capacity uh, to uh, work on killed viruses. So they killed. They worked on the killed virus. We gave them the killed virus, and they worked on the killed virus. To develop the vaccine. The vaccine was then given to us for electron microscopy and further characterization at, at, at ICMR. And then at the ICMR NIV Pune, we did the full study on rats, mice, hamsters, and showed and also that dosing how much is the dose? Is it three micrograms, is it six micrograms, is it nine micrograms? Is it uh, to be given seven days apart, 14 days apart? Number of, all that was done at ICMR NIV Pune. Then the monkey study, which is the landmark study, uh, the first of its kind and the published in Nature Communications, one of the biggest journals. And, 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 and here again, I faced a lot of flack because those monkeys were caught and then they were tested. And then I got the calls from various NGOs. Some of these NGOs even wrote to Nature Communications, please don't accept this paper. And, and, and we had to fight and explain that we've got permission for each and every monkey and, and all the monkey sacrifice and everything. That was totally 100% done by ICMR. Then the phase one clinical trial uh, was uh, uh, done by Bharat Biotech with mentoring from ICMR institutes and the phase one, phase two. And the phase three was funded 50% by ICMR, 50% by Bharat Biotech. And we provided them all the technical, the blood samples testing, the, the vaccine testing, the uh, serum testing, all was done by, by, by us. So it's, it's, it's actually been a 50-50 sort of a real partnership which has worked well. And, uh, and uh, we, we, we are trying to now uh, get a postage stamp for the same with the ICMR. Hopefully we should uh, succeed. So the, so the, the follow up question on this was, uh, will ICMR get a percentage of uh, the profits in the future when the vaccine becomes commercially more viable? Yeah. So that is very clear. The vaccine is uh, commercially very viable. The vaccine has been supplied to several crore doses have been supplied to the Indian government. They have supplied about 20 million doses to Brazil uh, at uh, $290 million. So, uh, so they, they, it will be a hugely profitable venture for them. Uh, as the MOU that we had made initially and as we do for all organization, 5% of the royalty will come to ICMR very clearly. Uh, and the uh, ICMR will be featuring, uh, they have not yet done it, but they are uh, now printing. ICMR will feature on each and every vial uh, and each and every box, uh, whether it be domestic or international. That that was the concern that uh, ICMR should get 50% of the profits, you know, because maybe more than 50 but anyhow i know that you will take care of it okay i will now turn over to professor ck raju who joins us from delhi go ahead professor raju so you're mu you're, you're muted i have had a very limited uh, can you hear me now yes yes nice and clear yeah so my limited concern with this has been in terms of ethics 
So I had organized a few meetings on this uh, about a decade ago, and it was especially scandalous the way clinical trials were being done in India because there are no regulations, there is no justice system, and uh, I mean, look at what Bio Biotech said in its uh, uh, disclaimer. You have to establish a causal relationship. You could not establish a causal relationship between smoking and cancer. At best, you could get a correlation. Now, how are you going to establish it in court? Out of question. So we don't have the kind of justice system that exists in the US. Can you name a single doctor who has been ruined because of bad, uh, because of malpractice in India? Doesn't happen. So we don't have a justice system. At least we should have an ethics system. The trials are conducted in this uh, People's Medical College in Bhopal. They were, let's look at the reports. There were no uh, proper uh, uh, information. I mean, they were not properly informed, the people who, with whom uh, trials were being conducted. And the government was co-opted to uh, do uh, part of the clinical trials. I mean, it was being administered as part of clinical trials. So I think that when are we going to do something about ethics? I mean, ethics about monkeys, yeah. I understand. They are also, I mean, they are also living beings. And we have a dis yeah. different system of ethics in this uh, country. So we should not okay. take monkeys as if they're just disposable and they can be, you know, you can just test on them and let them die. We have a lot of monkeys in Shimla and no one likes to be on good terms with them. So yeah. uh, leave that aside. But what have we done about the simple ethics of informed yes. consent? Yes. Informed yeah, consent, good. very good, very yeah. good. Go ahead. Yeah. I, so this is a very valid point that you have uh, brought out and the informed consent was followed with due diligence for all the trials. Uh, uh, and they, there were some, as, as I mentioned to uh, in the, in the beginning, there were certain groups who were working against uh, the, the people. Uh, and I have another hypothesis here. Uh, the problem uh, with the, the Indian mindset is uh, goes back to 1834. We have a Macaulayan mindset, which uh, if, uh, if you know about Lord Macaulay, how he said that if you have to rule in this country, you have to destroy the strong social system, the strong ethics system. He didn't say and that. He did, I'm sorry. He didn't say no. that. That's a complete falsehood. He did not say that. It came in the no. BJP manifesto. It is 100% false. Please no, show me your thoughts. No, no, you Please show me your thoughts. There okay. is no okay. Okay. Wait, let's not get into that debate. Falsehood. But in terms of ethics, uh, ethics were very, yeah. very well followed. Uh, the pendulum has swung when, when there were a lot of uh, clinical trials being done in India by the Western organizations, and suddenly they were all stopped. The pendulum swung that way. Then we got the new clinical trial rules in 2019, and I'd, I'd, I'd urge you to read that Gazette notifications, the 25, 30 page, and that is absolutely brilliant uh, clinical trial rule, which is exactly taken the best from the West taken the best from the East and, and, and those clinical trials, something like our constitution, which has taken the best from the French and the, and the UK. And that. so that is, is, is very, in terms of the ethics, we have now sec, an ethics but, registry, which we have, which we have created an ethics registry uh, for anyone to do a clinical trial has to have ethical clearance. Any institution should have an ethics committee for which we have made it uh, through the Department of Health Research via that notification. Now, 500 ethics committees are registered. First two years, it has uh, uh, become uh, that you have to, uh, it is voluntary. And after two years, it will become compulsory for every institution to have an ethics committee. So, uh, so that is, and again, again, you're absolutely right. This is work in progress. We are the pendulum swing from one side to the other side, and now we are somewhere coming to the middle path of Buddha and trying to, to get it in such a way that uh, the, the country uh, is, 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 is uh, perceived nationally and internationally as one of the best. Uh, and, and I think this vaccine uh, um, success story uh, of uh, phase one being done on a very large number of patients, phase two, and the phase three, which is the largest trial of 26,000 patients being done in India, with, uh, 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 if you compare it to the mortality of Pfizer, uh, 29 mortality in Norway, you, I mean, if you're looking at these, uh, for, uh, look at uh, some mortality in the UK, in AstraZeneca in Brazil, and, and, and look at Covaxin, we are, we are hard, I mean, no I would more. say, uh, so nothing. So from that perspective, because it's a killed virus, it's a killed virus. I mean, the biology is, is, is already, we know the biology. 
that that this is a killed virus this is going to be harmless so safety was proven very very fast uh, uh, the immunogenicity was proven very fast but we were not able to infect vaccinated pu people to get the efficacy because you need a certain percent who get the drug uh, vaccine certain who don't get the vaccine and then you see who gets covid-19 and a certain number has to be reached to calculate the efficacy percentage that took time because we started only in november the the phase 3 trial and and uh, we could have probably uh, scaled it uh, made it two months earlier uh, in terms of um, doing the phase 3 trial slightly earlier but we were waiting for the full phase 2 phase 1 publication and once that got into lancet we said and, and then we go ahead with the phase 3 and, and that's how it started but I, but you're right um, we need to as a nation um, show the world that we are more centrist rather than you know uh, than anything else as the pendulum has Thank you. how many philosophers do you have on your ethics committee please, how please, many please uh, philosophers do you have i just want to ask you yes good point good point, good point. we have now again here are innovative for this uh, covid 19 what we, what did we do for any project that had to be done for covid had to be done on a war footing we had to get ethics clearance within 24 hours. So what we did, we constituted a common CONEC, common ethics committee for uh, for COVID-19. And that was had several philosophers, several historians, several ethicists uh, on, on that committee. And that is Bangalore based. Mm -hmm. and, and that was in the ICMR uh, Institute of NCDIR. That was uh, running that ethics committee. And every project went to them electronically. And they were supposed to meet virtually within 24 hours and give us a decision, whether it be for plasma therapy, whether it was for remdesivir, all was clearly done through that. Uh, and 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 the again, as I mentioned, uh, had we done a separate ethics committee for every institution, we would not have been able to do the placenta. So the common ethics committee was a I I felt a master stroke at that point in time. Uh, th thank you. Um, <laughs> We are almost at the end of our time, and we'll have just one question, after which I will uh, invite uh, our resident medical officer to propose a vote of thanks. We want to tell you, Dr. Bhargav, that we've uh, had uh, a lot of testing at the Institute. We are also arranging for our senior fellows uh, to go to DDU hospital here and get themselves vaccinated. Uh, so we are uh, really trying our best to join this uh, nationwide effort in fact, today, I think some of our fellows must have got vaccinated. Those who are above 60. Anyhow, my last question has come about, uh, uh, you know, it's about the blood clot issue. Uh, I think that that is not Bharat Biotech, that's AstraZeneca, uh, the, yeah, the Serum yeah. Institute. Yeah, yeah. And also how they're asking, somebody has asked, uh, how do you account for the current rise? Is it a wave? Is it a spike? Or, uh, uh, you know, how do you account for it? And of course, the silver lining is that mortality rate is very low. The caseload Correct. may have increased. So the virus isn't so virulent anymore, it would seem. But go ahead. You can yeah, please I think that I, I, I'll okay. Yeah, in terms yeah. of these blood clots and these issues, uh, um, uh, uh, we've had uh, the design for the AstraZeneca vaccine study was a very adaptive design. Uh, uh, and it was the very first time they've done an adaptive design wherein they did some work in uh, UK. Uh, they they even approached us in the beginning in June. Uh, uh, they wanted the virus from us at that point in time and we, we had some memories with them. Then they gave the, the, the sample, uh, the study was done in Brazil and in South Africa. The, the study in UK is still ongoing for the AstraZeneca vaccine and it's not approved in the United States of America at all. Uh, so the adaptive design had some flaws as well as the fact that it was uh, uh, it was done, it was able to do it faster. But there were from some flaws in that. In terms of the clots, I do not think they are related to the vaccine. In fact, uh, blood thinners are to be continued uh, during the vaccine administration. They've had uh, implicate, uh, they've sus they had some neurological complications in the very beginning in August, uh, September, July, August, in um, uh, one in uh, Chennai and one in uh, Italy and one in, uh, I think, in the UK and also in the US, for which they stopped the trial for two or three days. And then it was restarted when they were 
uh, unable to establish uh, a causality. Obviously, that uh, question can remain. And and uh, so 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 from that perspective, I think it is a it is a very safe vaccine. Uh, it is a very uh, effective vaccine, and we need to continue to use it. And probably because of India being a vaccine superpower, uh, we should be probably with this vaccine vaccinating about 50 to 60 percent of the world's population. Uh, population with this vaccine alone. Now there is a WHO COVAX facility which has taken vaccines from different countries and then it is supplying to the healthcare workers uh, of low and middle and uh, lower income countries. And that facility has got a pool of vaccines and then it is supplying so that they can vaccinate 20% of the population of each of these poor countries. Now in that 70% of the vaccines are from the Serum Institute AstraZeneca vaccine. 28% is Korean, uh, 28 to 29% is Korean AstraZeneca vaccine, and 0.3%, 0.3% is from the other vaccines, whether it is Pfizer or Moderna, uh, which have really made it. Uh, Johnson Johnson still not made it, it is it probably will be out soon. So currently, we have only four or five, six players uh, on the international scene. So India has uh, been able to establish that. In terms to, to the second question for regarding the sudden cases and, and spike of cases, that uh, I have uh, clearly said it on the press as well. That is clearly related to very inappropriate COVID behavior, mass gathering, and not, not using the mask, uh, and and um, uh, we are rapid opening up of uh, of uh, metros and and suburban trains, etc., which is which is leading to this uh, this this problem. Thank you, thank you. I was just uh, while we were talking, looking at the ICMR, uh, you know, bioethics unit in Bangalore. So, Professor Raju, I refer you to their extensive materials on the website, which includes uh, ethical consent. It's a very extensive, even exhaustive set of guidelines. So, kindly look at that. Uh, now, I invite uh, Dr. Meenu Agarwal to propose a brief vote of thanks because. Uh, Professor Bhargav is very busy. And sir, I apologize. I mean, your biodata is, is uh, very, very impressive. I wanted to bring in the Padma Shri and the various other achievements, but uh, we'll do it another time. Uh, Dr. Minuji, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, please, thank please. Thank you very much, sir, for giving me this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Bhargav, uh, the DG ICMR. Uh, we are very fortunate you have you here, sir, with us. And we would be very happy to associate and collaborate with ICMR in any form, in any way we can contribute to this fight against COVID. We would be very happy and seek your blessings. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, delivering this uh, very nice and uh, <laughs> informative speech. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Me Dr. Meenu Agarwal has published a study of blood pressure and altitude. So she, she does some research as well and perhaps uh, she'll have an opportunity to to maybe publish something about uh, uh, covid uh, in shimla or so forth so anyhow thank you so much sir thank you dr bhargav it was such a pleasure and uh, i and i remember your wonderful conference on gandhi and public health uh, and uh, i hope that we can maybe do a collaborative conference in the future when times are less stressful thank you sir thank you once again Thank you so very much. I'm so grateful and it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm able to join the meeting because now another meeting virtual because I don't have to travel. It's virtual now. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you all the best in, in, in this nationwide international fight against uh, this pandemic. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.